So back in college, I was all over the dating apps. I'm talking Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble, the holy trinity of casual dating. Now let's say you match with someone, message them a bit, but things have gone dry and the conversation is in the casket getting lowered into the earth. At this point, you need to mentally move on to someone else. But before that, you throw the Hail Mary text. This text is low investment and straight to the point, skipping right to asking someone out. If it doesn't work, then who cares, cause you should have already have moved on emotionally. And in the off chance that it does work, then hey, good on you. Now I incorporated existentialism into one of these Hail Mary texts that I sent. Feel free to steal this line, but I basically said, hey, let's hang out tonight and forget about the existential dread in our lives. A little cringy, very straightforward, but it's the Hail Mary text, it's supposed to be like that. And you know what? It worked. Now this is all a conjecture, but I'd like to think that it worked because existential feelings are very relatable. Especially if you're around the college age. It's a time where the choices you make have an overwhelming significance that could possibly shape the rest of your life. You're filled with anxiety because of this dizziness of freedom to quote Kierkegaard. So you turn to YouTube to try to learn about existentialism, or you read The Stranger by Camus like everybody else. Don't worry, I did that too. But maybe you're interested in reading non-fiction existentialist work, but you don't exactly know where to start. This is where Jean-Paul Sartre's lecture, Existentialism is a Humanism, comes in. In my humble opinion. This is a great starting point for getting into existentialist writing because it's short, accessible, and very explanatory of existentialism as a whole. And lucky for you parasites out there, I'll give a brief overview of some of the ideas of this text in this video. I'm just kidding, I love you guys. Welcome back to Philosophy Tunes, and I hope you all are enjoying some of the changes I've made to the channel. Now I highly recommend that you read this work for yourself. It's less than 40 pages if you don't count the post-lecture discussion. But not to worry, if you're a busy bee then I'll do my best to go over the key points. So let's actually start with the title. Break down what Sartre means by existentialism and what he means by humanism. Starting with existentialism, this is how Sartre defines it in a very general sense. Existentialism is a doctrine that makes human life possible and also affirms that every truth and every action imply an environment and human subjectivity. Now that's kind of vague. So what I want you guys to do is pull out your handy dandy notebook and just make a note of this definition. We'll look at some features of existentialism and you guys can compare it to this definition and draw connections. Now moving on to humanism, this is a very broad concept so doing a quick google search won't be super helpful. Thankfully, Sartre explains the exact type of humanism he means when he says that existentialism is a humanism. The only universe that exists is the human one, the universe of human subjectivity. The link between transcendence as constitutive of man and subjectivity is what we call existentialist humanism. So you may notice that both Sartre's explanation of existentialism and humanism puts a human being at the forefront. Humanism to Sartre isn't something that places a high praise on humankind and says that we're awesome, but rather, it's a philosophy that focuses its inquiry on what it means to be human. And if we return to our definition of existentialism, it seems like it is very concerned with the human being. This is humanism because we remind man that there is no legislator other than himself and that he must, in his abandoned state, make his own choices. So hopefully the title Existentialism is a Humanism makes a bit more sense. Side note, is anyone else slightly bothered by the title? It just sounds grammatically weird, I don't know. But okay, now that we understand the human-centered background behind existentialism and humanism, that begs an obvious question. What does it mean to be human? Well this leads us to our first principle of existentialism. The idea that existence precedes essence. If you remember nothing else from this video, remember this key phrase for existentialism. But what does it mean? Well let's start with essence. Think about a created product in our market economy that everyone loves so much. How about a hammer? Before the hammer is created, the manufacturer designs this tool with its purpose in mind, to hammer things. The manufacturer thinks, okay, this tool must be used to hammer things, and afterwards they create the hammer. The essence of the hammer is to hammer things, and the existence of this hammer only comes after the essence has been established. Following me so far? But what about humans? Well with God, you might argue that God creates us and has an essence in mind for us. But if you're an atheist like Sartre and many other existentialists, this doesn't apply. 
God doesn't make a plan for you or give you an essence and then you spring into existence. Rather, you exist first and then your essence follows. Man first exists. He materializes in the world, encounters himself, and only afterward defines himself. If man as existentialists conceive of him cannot be defined, it is because to begin with, he is nothing. Now who creates our essence which follows our existence? Well, we do. You see, we can't just place the blame for who we are on a god or whatnot. Now we're solely responsible for our actions and how we create ourselves in the world. And yeah, that comes with a lot of freedom, but at the same time, that's a lot of responsibility. It's like Uncle Ben says, with great power comes great responsibility. That's pretty heavy if you look back on your life and all the wrong choices you've made. You were the one who made those choices and you are responsible. So you know that person you could have asked out but you were too afraid to? Well now they'll never know the way you felt about them and that was your choice that you made. You gotta live with it. Even if we both know they would have said yes. And you can't escape this fact of your existence. You need to choose. Even not choosing is in itself a choice. This is what Sartre calls anguish, this back to the wall feeling where we must choose, we have an obligation or a responsibility to choose. But that's not all. You don't just choose and commit for yourself. But when making choices in the world, Sartre believes you are also indicating to the world what the correct choices that they should be making as well. A man who commits himself and who realizes that he is not only the individual that he chooses to be, but also a legislator choosing at the same time what humanity as a whole should be, cannot help but be aware of his own full and profound responsibility. You see, when giving this lecture, Sartre is responding to some critiques of existentialism, that it's a philosophy of isolation and despair. But if our choices really signal to the world what the correct choices are, then existentialism becomes a pretty social philosophy. Every choice you make is somewhat similar to giving advice to the rest of the world in this sense. When we say that man chooses himself, not only do we mean that each of us must choose himself, but also that in choosing himself, he is choosing for all men. So hopefully now you have a good idea as to what you'll be expecting when you read this lecture. And yes, I'm assuming you will read it and not just listen to me talk about it. I mean at least read it so you could look cool in a cafe and maybe have another big brain attractive philosophy person come up and comment on it. Just promise me that you'll tell them about your old friend Paul from Philosophy Tunes. Speaking of which, if you like the video then feel free to toss me a subscription and also hit the like and bell button below. Comment below your thoughts on the text and let the world know if you read it or not. And with that I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.